What's up guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my very shiny face because as you can see, I've only got foundation and concealer on at the minute because today I'm doing a video where I'm gonna show you guys how to change your face. So on one side of my face today, I'm gonna do my makeup how I used to. And then on this side, I'm gonna show you guys how I do my makeup now that I think really changes the look and shape of my face and with like very minimal makeup. I actually feel like I use less makeup now than I used to. So yeah, I'm gonna show you guys a couple tips and tricks on how you can maybe switch up your makeup routine. Nothing is necessarily right, nothing is necessarily wrong. It's just what I kind of prefer at the minute. And I'm very excited today because today's video is partly sponsored by Illamasqua, who I have worked with before and I love their stuff. So I'm gonna be using a lot of their products today to show you guys how to do this makeup look. Illamasqua have so many offers on at the moment. They're always doing different discounts and they're always giving away like free products with your order. So make sure you check them out down below. And I do also have a discount code with Illamasqua, which I will put on screen now and also down below as well. So if anything takes you fancy, make sure you check that out. But yeah, everything that I'm using today are products that I know and I love and I highly recommend. So again, I feel like I keep saying this, I'm like a broken record. All links, where are they? Let's say it together, down below. Okay, let's get into the video. So I think this side is gonna be the wrong side. Again, nothing about any of this is wrong. Like you can do whatever the hell you want with your makeup. You can do whatever you want with your face. It is your face. But I do just generally prefer how this side is gonna look. So what I have on my face right now is the Beyond Foundation, which I love. It's like quite a medium coverage, but it still looks very skin-like. So really, really like that. And then I also have the Skin Lift Concealer on as well, just to brighten my under eyes. So the first product that I'm gonna be using is their Gel Sculpt, which I tried out fairly recently. And honestly, this stuff, is an absolute game changer. I've never really used a product like it. So this, as you can see, it literally just looks like a black stick, but when you apply it, it's a very, very subtle contour and it blends out so, so nicely. So I wouldn't normally use cream contour or anything in the way that I used to do my makeup. So I'm actually not gonna do it on this side, but what I'm gonna do is pop this on my cheeks. And I'm gonna go quite high. Like typically I would put my contour here. I'll show you guys in a bit when I'm doing powder contour. But what I'm gonna do with the cream, especially because it's quite subtle, I'm gonna go a quite a bit higher. And then for around my neck here, normally I would put contour just kind of like anywhere around here. But I'm actually gonna go right underneath. Like there's already a bit of a shadow there for me anyway, but I'm gonna go right over the top of that. And then also at the back here. And then I'm also gonna go around here and ignore the hair dye. That's giving me like, it's giving me like a slight little blockhead situation going on. I just got my hair dyed for when I go into locked in, which I still can't believe is happening. But yeah, I'm gonna pop a little bit just above my temple. And I'm just gonna blend that out using the foundation brush that I used before. And I'm gonna blend it upwards. If I was to ever use cream contour before, I would just put it on and literally just like apply it like that, which is fine, but Doing it upwards just means that my face is gonna be a lot more lifted. I mean, you can see how subtle this stuff is, but I like that. Like, I don't necessarily want like a gray stripe going down the side of my face. I just want a little bit of a shadow. Just bring that upwards. And then again, I'm bringing it upwards around my hairline. So that is literally it for the cream products. So now I'm just gonna powder everything down like I would normally. This is just a loose powder from Illamasqua. And this has such a nice smell. It's very, very subtle, but it smells like icing sugar. I feel like one thing I do differently as well now is I use a lot less powder. Like before, I never really use much powder anyway, but now I use a lot, a lot less. So now we're gonna move on to bronzing and contouring. And I feel like this is one of the steps that really makes a difference in your face. So I'm gonna be using their color correcting bronzer, which looks like this. You've got a nice little blue stripe down the middle. And on this side of my face, what I would normally do is I would go in with quite a big brush. And don't get me wrong, when I'm in a rush, I will still do this because it still works. But I would normally just go in with a big brush and just put it all over my cheeks really. I was always taught to do it in like a three motion. So kind of go around and onto the jaw like that. And again, if I'm in a rush, I will do it like that because it is just very, very like easy and quick just to splat it all over your face. But what I tend to do now is I tend to concentrate it a little bit more. So you should be able to see the difference in a second. And what I'm doing this time guys, is I'm not gonna do anything like really ridiculous on this side. I am just literally gonna do my makeup like I would normally. I'm not gonna try and make it look like crazy different just for the sake of a video. I'm just gonna do exactly what I would do before. But what I'm gonna do on this side is I'm actually gonna take a denser brush 
and take a little bit less product and I'm gonna build it as opposed to just going straight in. I'm gonna take a little bit more time to build it up. So again, I'm starting in the same place that I did with the cream contour and just going upwards. I'm not doing a three shape or anything like that. I'm just dusting upwards. Already just from doing that, I don't know if you guys can see the difference, but I feel like that looks like it's actually a better cheekbone, whereas this, I just look more bronze. And it's kind of coming down onto my cheeks a bit more as well, which can sometimes make my face look a little bit more, almost like droopy. And then again, at the same place that I put the cream contour, I'll focus it more up there. And then for my jawline, again, I'm doing the same thing that I did with the gel contour and going underneath, as opposed to just going like, yeah, that will shorten my jaw a little bit or sharpen it out. I'm gonna go underneath and I'm doing a lot less than I would before. Like, do you guys see the difference a little bit? I feel like this side just looks a lot more lifted than this side. This one just looks like, oh, she's got bronzer all over the side of her face. Whereas this one, it's like, oh, are they your natural cheekbones? No. So now we're gonna move on to blusher. So this one here is in the shade Hussy. And guys, I've started liking blusher a lot more recently. It's only taken me like two years longer than everyone else, but I, I've i started appreciating it. So before I wouldn't really use that much blusher at all, to be honest. It was just like a token thing that I would do just to say that I've used it. But again, I would go in with the same brush that I used for my bronzer and I would literally just smack it on my face anywhere, just kind of like apples of my cheeks, bring it upwards a little bit and just kind of leave it at that really. Like I probably wouldn't even normally put that much on, but the amount that I put on, you probably wouldn't even be able to see it. So what I think looks a lot nicer now, and I'm actually gonna use the same brush, but I'm only taking it right on the edge of it. I'm basically gonna pop that a little bit higher than I did the bronzer. And I'm not actually gonna bring it onto the front of my cheeks that much. This is when you can really start to notice the difference because this, I just feel like, again, there's nothing really wrong with it, but this side does just look, again, just so much more lifted and it's it looks like a lot more cohesive. I feel like everyone, when they're first taught any kind of makeup, regardless of who it's from, everyone's always taught to put blusher on the apples of your cheeks, like if you smile, then you kind of put it here and it can work for some face shapes, but I feel like if you want more of a lifted look, you kind of want to bring it up onto your cheekbones a little bit more. I feel like this is also a good way to add a little bit of warmth to your face as well, instead of just going OTT with bronzer, by just adding a tiny little bit of like a pinky, my brush just wanted to say see you then, just like a pinky blusher or something, or something with a little bit of warmth to it, it just, I don't know, just kind of lifts the face a little bit without just putting loads of orange on there. See now I can definitely notice the difference here with a side by side comparison. This side still looks fine, nothing wrong with it, but this side has fully just sculpted my face more and I've actually used less product. Okay, so now we're talking highlighter and <laughs> brace yourselves. I don't use as much as I used to. I still use enough for like the whole of the UK's population, but I don't quite go as OTT the same way that I used to. So normally, I would just go, hell yeah, let's whack this all over my face, all over my cheekbones. I do love it though, like I I still do this sometimes, okay? And the highlighter that I'm using, by the way, which I'm obsessed with, is the OMG Beyond highlighter. And then I would go to town on my cupid's bow, like I would fully just take my finger and do that. Just like, if I, I would do more than that, let's be real here. It would be proper milk mustache, which again, has its time, has its place, but it's not my go-to now. But yeah, nowadays I don't take as much and I don't take it like all over the brush. I'll just kind of focus it on the tip and I'll go a little bit higher and concentrate it a bit more. So instead of just going the more the merrier, I'll be a bit, I'll be a bit more subtle. <laughs> I can't believe I'm even saying this. More blush, less highlighter, I don't, am I me? Like, am I in like some alternate reality or something? Like what has actually happened here? And then again, a very, very tiny amount on my forehead because I don't want the shiniest forehead in the world. I just mattified it down for a reason. So I'm only gonna take a tiny bit just to give me a little bit of dimension just so I don't look like a sheet of A4 paper. And instead of this side where I'll literally take the highlighter down to about here, I won't really go past the outer corner of my eye because I find again, it does just make everything sort of look a little bit more droopy. It's like, it doesn't seem like it would. You kind of think, okay, highlighter, the more of it, the more it's gonna lift my face. But as you start to bring things down around here, it does just kind of, I don't know, I feel like it just detracts from everything. And then what I do still like to do is go over my highlighter with my foundation brush 
just to set it in very, very lightly. And I'll do the same on this side as well. It just kind of presses it into the skin a bit more, looks less like you've got shiny, shimmery stuff on your face. It just looks like you're a bit more healthy. Okay, so next we're gonna move on to brows and I feel like your brows are the thing that fully shapes your face. I know a lot of people don't really like the whole soap brow, laminated brow sort of situation, but honestly, the reason I do that is, first of all, I love it, but also it really does help to lift your face. So how I would normally just do my brows before is I might lift the tail a tiny bit, but typically I would just kind of follow the natural shape of my brow. And if anything, I would spike up the front a little bit, but I would kind of just do it like this. And I know some people do prefer that. It's a lot more of like a natural looking brow, but for me, I want a bit of lift. So I will mostly focus the brow gel on this part of my brow. So if I want to lift the arch a little bit, I will quite literally brush pretty much upwards, just making sure that all the hairs kind of stay where I want them. So that's the hairs fully brushed up and I actually used to wear my brows like this, but I've I've kind of tweaked it a little bit now, so I'll brush them up and then as they're drying, I'll sort of bend it around a little bit just so I'm not like full on werewolf. <laughs> it's so fine to look at because it literally looks like I'm raising one eyebrow at you just from lifting that little bit there. I also like the fact that it gives me a little bit more eyelid space or at least the illusion of more eyelid space because it just means that I can just like fit a little bit more in there because I've lifted everything up. And then when it comes to filling in my brows, I don't tend to fill them in that much, if ever now, because I don't really feel like I need to. Like I've never really needed to because my eyebrows have always like had their own postcode. What I would actually used to do to lift my brow is I would literally just pencil it in a little bit higher, which again is something that you can do, but I would do it quite harshly because my brows are so dark anyway. I would have to fill it in a bit more just so it, didn't look that weird, but in turn it ended up looking more weird than I wanted it to. And I'd also fill in the front a little bit as well, because I was always under the impression that like, oh, when there's gaps in my eyebrows, that's not good. But I think because my eyebrows are quite harsh as they are anyway, filling them in even more did just make them look a lot more blocky. And sometimes I will still get a gap in my brow or I might over pluck them a little bit. So if I am gonna fill them in at all now, I'll just go ever so lightly over a couple of the gaps, instead of properly trying to fill everything in, I'll just very roughly shade it in. And like, for example, here, I've had one little brow hair flop out. So I'll just fill it in the tiniest bit, but I won't bother to fill in all the gaps. Just like if there's one gap that I'm noticing that's annoying me a little bit, I might fill it in, but that is pretty much all I'll do with my brows. It's so weird to look at because it fully looks like I'm just like, okay, so now we're gonna move on to eyes, which again, I feel like the eyes is one of those things that can really like make or break a look. I'm gonna keep it quite simple today just because again, that's what I would normally do. So I'm going in with the Elemental Artistry palette today. It's got a whole load of mattes, a lot of really, really cool tones and a couple of warm tones in there as well. There's one shimmer, this black, by the way, one of the best black eyeshadows I've ever tried. And all I would do before is go in with a slightly medium brown color on a fluffy brush and whack that all over my lid and in my crease. I would pretty much just do this. Sometimes I would use a bronzer as well, just instead of eyeshadow. But yeah, I would go all over my lid and right in the crease there and bring it up quite a bit and just really smoke that out. Then using the same brush, I would fully just go right underneath my lower lash line with that. And I'd still do this if I want something really, really smoky, but I would just whack that right under my eyes. However, nowadays, I'll normally take a little bit more time on my eyeshadow. Again, it's so, so quick and easy, but I'll take a slightly smaller brush and basically do it a slightly less lazy way and go straight into the crease and just build that up a touch. And then a really good trick, if you wanna lift your eyes a bit, just do some flicking motions. Like you don't need to like do any special blending or anything. Just get a tiny little bit of eyeshadow on the corner of your eye and just flick upwards. And at first you'll be like, is anything happening? Like, what am I doing here? I'm bored. But after a while, it will really start to bring everything upwards. So then I'll go in with a little mixture of these two shades again, and I'll focus this mostly on the outer corner. I just find that more flattering for my eye now. Like if I have a lighter shade here, or even just like nothing, I find that it just makes my eyes look a lot more awake. Do we see the difference? This has more of like a wing to it, but again, I use less eyeshadow than this side. And what I actually do on my lower lash line now is nothing, typically. Like if I'll do anything, just for the sake of the video, I might take a very, very small amount of eyeshadow and now get a lot closer 
to my lash line. And again, mostly focus it on the outer corner. I think the main takeaway from all of this is basically if you want your eyes to look a lot more almond shaped, if you want them to be pulled out a little bit more, don't focus much, if any product, on the inner corner unless you want to kind of bring that in as well. Just focus it on the outer corner. So the next step is something that I never used to do. It would be so rare for you guys to see me with any kind of wing, but these days I do it all the time. Like even if I'm just wearing a little bit of concealer or something in my brows, I'll normally do a little bit of a wing on the corner of my eye. And so what I'm doing here is I'm taking that cool tone brown. I'm gonna take a touch of the black, literally like the tiniest amount. And I'm gonna bring that up to the tail of my brow again and then just connect that down a little bit. And again, looking forward, I don't want it to be like a super harsh wing, just cause that's not really my jam, but I just want it to be not that noticeable. Like you don't suddenly look at me and think, wow, like she's got wing eyeliner on. It's just like a slight little subtle lift. And you can obviously do this with liner if that's what you want to do, but I personally prefer to do it with eyeshadow these days. Sometimes I'll even take a little bit of eyeshadow or just like a brown liner or anything like that and pop it right onto my inner corner, trying not to poke my eyeballs out here. But I'll just bring that ever so slightly into my inner corner and I won't fully extend it, but I'll just lightly go outside the line. You notice the difference, right? This is like more elongated, more feline. This side is like, I'm, I'm still all right with it, but I just feel like it just makes my face look a little bit more rounded, which again, nothing wrong with that. Like I said, you guys can do whatever the hell you want with your face, your makeup, whatever, but I do just prefer this side. Okay, so now for mascara, I'm gonna be using the Illa Masca Infinite Mascara, which I really, really like. I hadn't tried this before until fairly recently, but it's really, really good. And the way that I would normally do my old mascara is the just the bog standard way of doing mascara, really. I would just kind of put it all over all of my lashes, like go right in to the inner corner, fan them out a bit, build up a little bit of volume maybe in the center. Look at this mascara. It makes your lashes look so long. So I do that. And one thing that I don't tend to do that often, unless I am doing more of an intense eye makeup look, is I would always go like quite a bit on my lower lashes. Honestly, this mascara on your lower lashes is a bit of a game changer to be honest. So that's typically what I would used to do, whereas now, I very, very rarely put anything on my lower lashes, again, because I only really want to elongate the outer corner. So literally all I'll do is focus the mascara on the outer corner, and it's very, very rare that I'll bring it into my inner corner at all. And if I do ever decide that maybe I want a little bit on my lower lashes, again, I'll only really focus on the outer corner here, just literally like the outer third. I can 100% notice the difference now. This eye is just a lot more lifted. So now I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of my lip plumper, just to hydrate my lips a little bit. And the lip liner that I'm gonna be using today is in the shade Media, so it's just really nice. It's quite a bright pink actually, but I use this quite sparingly now. So again, I'll show you what I used to do on this side, because I used to overline my lips quite a lot, and I still do a little bit, but it's more in like precise areas to give the illusion that my lips are fuller in some areas, whereas before I would just go to town. So before, I'm gonna make a bit of a funny face, I would go quite low here, and I would actually press quite hard with the liner. And for my top lip, which I feel like is the thing that's the most different these days, I would overline everything. And there would never be much shape or much definition there. I would fully just do like one fail swoop around my lips, just like that. So you can see it has made my lips look a little bit fuller, but I get the same kind of effect of my lips looking fuller. If anything, they actually look a little bit more full when I do this. But what I'll do instead, is instead of going onto the outer corner of my lips, I'll actually like kind of skip that out a little bit. So I'll still go fairly low in the center of my lip, but I'll kind of skip out on the outer corner a little bit now. And I'll also use a lot less pressure. I was like fully just like crayoning in my lips before. Whereas I find it's more flattering if I just use a slightly lighter hand. So now when it comes to overlining my top lip, I still do it, but I mostly focus it in the center. But now instead of following my lip line and overlining all of it, I'll go almost in like a straight line down to the outer corner. And doing this, instead of making your whole lips in general look bigger, it doesn't make them look wider as well. It'll just focus it more so on the center, just makes them look a little bit fuller in the middle. And I feel like that looks a lot more flattering, a lot more natural. 
And then something that I never used to do before because I just couldn't be bothered is I'm gonna take the Skin Lift Concealer and to sharpen up that line even more, I like to just go down the sides of my lips as well. And you can even conceal around here if you want to. And then of course, like nothing's changed here. I still do this all the time. Again, taking the Skin Lift Concealer and popping that right in the middle of the lips. Just to give it a little bit of an ombre. And again, that'll help to make your lips look fuller without having to go overboard and really overlining them. It'll just make them look like they're a lot fuller in the middle. I feel like the lips just look so much better this time around. Everything on this side, I just love it so much more now. And then last but not least is something that I think makes such a huge difference. So if I ever have time, I will always do this. I'm gonna pop on some lashes, which I never used to do for this sort of makeup look. Obviously I would if I was, you know, planning on going out or if I had a little bit more time. Before, if I was to put on lashes, I am quite a small person, so I'd always cut them down a fair bit. I would normally make them into like three quarter length lashes. But now, I'll probably cut off like 60% of the lash. And again, to lift the eyes, I'm gonna pop that right on the outer corner. And because I've got that liner on as well, I can actually lift the lash a little teeny tiny bit away from my natural lashes. So I just like to pop that on for a second and then just kind of tweak the lash just a touch, just so again, it lifts it. I wonder how many times I've said lift in this video. That's like the whole theme, as you can kind of tell. Just like that, because normally, again, when I had like a three quarter length lash, it would lift my eyes up in the center a bit more, which is fine if that's the look you're going for, but for me, I just want it on the outer corner. Oh yes. Now we see the difference, right? Like now I can, it's, it's like the same makeup, but just slightly, slightly different techniques and it looks totally different. Like this side, not bad, would still wear it if I did my makeup like this. I'd still go out and about like it. But this side, it's, it's less makeup, but it's doing so much more. I'm gonna put a little side-by-side -side comparison on screen now so you guys can see the difference. But honestly, it's just crazy to me that it's literally less makeup, the same products, but it looks so, so different. So yeah, guys, let me know which side of makeup you prefer. There's no right or wrong answer here. I'm just genuinely curious. And as always, all products that I used in today's video will be linked down below, alongside any discount codes and offers that Ellen Mask have going at the minute. So make sure you check that out. As always, if you guys enjoyed this video, you know what to do by now. Please do give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you do wanna see more of me because I upload all the damn time and don't forget I'm going into the Foot Asylum locked in house very very soon on November the 3rd you guys are going to be able to watch everything so I'll leave a link to that down below I'm now going to go and even up my makeup because I'm looking a little bit wonky right now but apart from that that is it from me I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one bye